When it comes to paying great young players, Jerry Jones and company are number one, cheap, number two, short-sighted, and number three, not as smart as they think they are. Keyshawn, do you agree with any or all of the above? Zero. Zero? I, I, right. I, I disagree with Mike Florio all the way down. I don't agree with any of it. First of all, Skip, you, a lifelong Cowboy fan, has been following this thing before the salary cap. Okay? They've always paid their players. Jerry Jones has always paid their players, especially the ones that they draft that turn out to do well, whether it's a Michael and Emmett or Troy, or whether it's a, a Ezekiel Elliott and eventually a C.D. Lamb or a Dak Prescott or Tony Romo. I can just go Larry Allen and Flozell Adams and Torrin Smith. I can go on and on and on and on about them always paying their players. What was the other one? Um, short-sighted. Short-sighted. <laughs> well, I buy a team for $150 million is now worth $10 billion. I don't know, Does that seem short-sighted to me? That seems seem short-sighted <laughs> to me. Does it? I mean, I don't know. No, uh, you know. It short-sighted to <clears> me. <throat> I now am worth close to $15 billion, me, Jerry Jones. Doesn't seem short-sighted to me at all. So I don't know where he comes up with all of this about the Cowboys. It sounds like to me there must be some sort of rift with the Cowboys organization, which is possibly could be because nothing that he's saying is correct. When you talk about being cheap, short-sighted, not smart, the dude is literally on all the major committees in the National Football Leagues with the owners. He's on all of them, TV committee and this committee and competition. He's on all of them mm -hmm. because he's clearly the go-to guy for the National Football League. So something says he's smart. He was the individual here in Los Angeles here a day or two ago dealing with the direct TV madness. Mm -hmm. They had him in there dealing with that stuff. Yep. He must be smart. He must be. I understand... We want them to do certain things a certain way. In the National Football League, there used to be a time, and Stephen Jones even referred to this in one of his press conferences, there used to be a time where we as athletes wanted to be first. We wanted to get our contract done. We wanted to do it now. Not anymore. Now it's about let somebody else go first because we got to get more. We're going to wait. It takes two to tangle with these contracts, as I've always told you, Skip. Yep. I can put a contract on the table that many of us right now will be like, man, I'm taking that $200 million. It's like, okay, but if you take the 200 that dude that's right behind you in the same class, same situation, he's going to get 250 Won't you let him go first? Let him get his 250 so we can go 275 That's the way it is nowadays. It's not when I came out, I had, when I was up, I'm the first one, so now Randy Moss is going to leapfrog me, and then yeah. somebody else is going to leapfrog Randy Moss. Mm -hmm. it, that, it's not like that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to wait to see where those numbers are going to be because those numbers are crazy. And, and they get caught in this. They think they're smarter than everybody else because they're not paying the players. Well, a player has to want to accept the proposal that they're giving you to even be able to sign. So, yeah, I don't agree with anything <laughs> that he's saying. Dude worth $15 billion. Yeah. He ain't smart. <clears throat> Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, to go along with the, on the lines that <clears throat> you're saying, I think they're rel relatively talking about the current situation. That is true. You know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when you're not paying your young players and CeeDee Lamb and Michael Parson, and then you, you're having this issue with, with Dak Process, I mean, I mean Dak, Dak Prescott, you know, is he cheap? Not at all. They, they pay their players eventually. But you got to understand, Jerry... He, he, he loves the negotiating the juice. aspect. He it's the juice. He loves the he negotiating does. aspect of mm -hmm. this. It's the this juice. part right here. It's like, like I was saying to somebody, like, when I, when I go to China, and, 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 you know, when you first go to the little swap meets and you, you, they tell you a price and you be like, you tell them a different price, <laughs> and then you walk away, and then they're like, no, 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 they come negotiate. Back. Yeah. Jerry loves that. And yeah. he always say he like to stir things up. I mean, this is, to me, I look at this, man, this is like one big game to him between the media, between what he's saying now, because all signs are pointing to him not signing. So I just think that's a tactic. That's another tactic. I truly believe he'll sign CeeDee Lamb. And I'm thinking, like, you saying bet on Dak, 
I'm thinking they might even sign Dak before the season starts. They, just they, to make him feel comfortable they, and they happy and, 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 and just get that pressure off his head going into the season so they can have a success. The problem with season. Dak, though, the problem mm -hmm. with signing Dak, if they was going to redo Dak's deal, it feels like to me they would have restructured his deal in the spring yeah, to get cap relief and true. be able to go out and deal with players. So I don't know if they'll do that opposed to just letting him ride it out. Yeah. Paul, you just sent a wave of nausea through my stomach. <laughs> You're predicting they're going to sign Dak before the season. Before the season. They, okay. they should. Look, they should. Again, I'm only speaking as a lifelong diehard fan. When I tell you, Jerry is starting to scare me because once he digs in on, on a new thing, his new thing is let, let everybody else do free agency. Let everybody else sign their players. Mm -hmm. but we're going to wait. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. They spent by far the least money through free agency because they don't do free agency because Jerry runs and controls the draft and, and he, he wants his reputation, his legacy to hinge on we draft. We build through the draft. And then to your point, they, they ultimately do pay these players. Yes. But he's going to make them sweat. Yeah. And now he's really making th these players sweat. And don't tell me he doesn't watch what Howie Roseman and company are doing in Philadelphia because he's trying to do opposite of them. Like, we, we, we'll let them do all that because, mm -hmm. as you, to your point, on paper, they look pretty good. Well, they, they got everybody done. And I, I'm looking, we're going to talk about the new Madden 25 receiver ranking. I'm looking at A.J. Brown. He's fourth on this list. That's, that's pretty high. That, that actually surprised me. That he'd be fourth on this list. <laughs> oh, what he, list is that? The the Madden. Well, where was he Madden supposed ranking. to be? Yeah. Where was he supposed to be? AJ Brown. Yeah. I just wouldn't have him that high. But the, I'm going to make the point. <laughs> you, you think he's better than Devonte and Jamar? Oh, ooh, ooh. I don't. But we'll, we'll get to that in a few minutes. We'll but my that. point is, he's up there. And guess what? He signed, sealed, and delivered. As is his running mate over there, Devonte. So you got both those guys. They're done. Jalen is done. Mm -hmm. The whole offensive line is signed, sealed, and Running delivered. Back's done. Running back is done, done. Okay, I, I don't know. You, you can't do better than they did through an offseason and a draft. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting back saying, Jerry, are you awake? You know, go, do, does somebody need to go shake you a little bit and wake you up? I, I don't know what you're doing because you're not doing anything. And I'm, I'm with you on this. Florio is is he's focused on C.D. Lamb right now mm -hmm. because it is dragging on and on and it doesn't feel like it should have. So Stephen Jones said yesterday, well, we we tried to do something with C.D. last year yeah. during the season uh -huh. and he said no. And you always say it takes two. two. Yeah, it takes two to yeah. tangle. Okay. Whatever you whatever you tried to do. Yeah. <clears throat> what we okay. It's like any industry. I know what everybody makes, whether you yeah. want to believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I can get what Jamar Chase and Jefferson is potentially going to make. You're offering me less than what the noise says they're going to make. Mm -hmm. And if the noise says that they're going to get record-breaking deals, yeah. why should I take less than those record-breaking deals when I hold myself in such high regard as those guys? Okay. So you make an offer that's appealing enough for me to be able to say, okay, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. Not something from five years ago. And that's where they okay, started. I, I got you. I'm here. Y you're right. Jerry's a shrewd operator mm -hmm. in business, as he calls it. And he's worth whatever it is, $15, 15 billion. Dollars. It's ridiculous. A lot of money. Okay. It's, a, it's a whole, and if he sold the team, he'd be worth, it'd just yeah. be like, it's, it's absurd. It's the most valuable. Yes. And, but he's not smart. And yet, the truth is, <clears throat> Should, should I believe in Jerry Jones as the owner and operator of my team if my team hasn't even been to an NFC championship game in 29 years? Should I trust him? So what has he shown me? What, what have we done? Hey, that's, that's a long time, man. We're going on 30 years of no NFC championship I, I, game. You know, I hate trying to talk about this with y'all because it feels like it, it makes me feel like I'm apologizing for the lack of success that the Dallas Cowboys have had. Jerry Jones has done a tremendous job of assembling talent. He's always had a talented roster. He's not coaching the team. He'd like to. 
Well, Seriously. he may like to, may not, but he ain't. I don't think he could get up and down the sidelines for four no. quarters. He's not coaching the team. Mike McCarthy, Jason Garrett, Wade Phillips, those are the guys that had to get these dudes over the hump. This is why Mike McCarthy is a lame duck coach right now. He's in a yeah. prove it situation. If he proves it, then they'll give him an extension. That's, it's, it's simple. It's okay. simple. Does Jerry pick the wrong coach? Does he pick some puppet type coaches so he can control them? I, I, I think the puppet type coaching, I think people, because of what happened with Jimmy and then Parcells, people think everybody else is puppets. I've been in the building with him multiple times. He ain't calling plays. No. He's not suggesting you should run this. He's just not. What he's doing is helping deliver the players mm -hmm. and giving opinions on certain players to play, things of that nature, what all general managers do. He's the general manager. But he's not saying, run to the right, run to the left, throw the ball right here. He's just not doing that. No. And I, no. I want to <clears throat> dispel that notion that he is because the first thing people say is he's always meddling. Well, he ain't meddling in the play, the day-to-day -day play calling. He's not doing that. He might be meddling in getting press conference, getting into the press conference and having his radio shows and things of that nature. Yeah. If that affects a coach, then that coach probably shouldn't be a part of coaching the team. <laughs> well, who's going to turn him down, right? You're going to turn down the Dallas Cowboys? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you offer that job, you're going to take it. And you got to block out whatever little noise that is and get your players to play for you. Yeah. Jerry is going to suggest maybe let's let's get it to CD a little more next game. That, oh, but that all general thing. managers do. do that. Right, you got it. That's why he said, I'm paying this dude $55 million, man. Mm -hmm. Get him the ball. Yeah. You got to throw the ball to the right guy. Yeah. That's, that's all he's saying. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. And he wants to be able to sit around, especially on a Friday afternoon, <laughs> and, and have a couple of beers and eat some nachos and, and talk coach talk with the head coach, you know, like serious yeah. football talk. But that's what general okay. managers all yeah, do. I understand. They all sit around and want to talk about football, serious football talk. Mm -hmm. And if a coach, well, I know my coach, he went in one ear and out the other with Parcell. He wasn't, he, well, then. he's just doing it to do it, but he ain't listening yeah. to that. He going to do what he want to do. Yeah. And if Mike McCarthy steps up to the plate and does what he wants to do, then maybe you guys will win 12 games this year, or maybe you won't. Maybe, maybe you'll won't. be four, four in or no, something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or 13. That's what it's looking like. Nah, they ain't going to be that bad. Like. They're not going to be that bad. Because CeeDee Lamb is going to get his money. CeeDee will definitely come back. CeeDee's going to get his money. Michael Parsons will be done in the offseason, and Dak will be a free agent. Okay. And he do you, do you think A.J. Brown was, was wrong to take that money that fast? If he's the fourth ranked on Madden, should he have waited like C.D. waited? Yeah, but, he, but his contract was not up. They just redid his. They did. They just said, you know what? We need some cap relief. We're going to use some more money. We like what you've been able to do. We're going to give you a couple more years. That's, that's all that he was. He sounded real happy about of it. Of course, <laughs> because it, it, it makes sense. Yeah. If they come to you, look, whenever you go, and I said this to you a while ago, Skip, whenever you go early, you're going to give up something. Mm -hmm. What are you giving up? Risk versus reward. You are. Okay? I'm not a risk taker. Okay, reward me now. I'm I'm different. I don't need to be the highest and break the record. That's not my mindset. I'm like AJ Brown. What you got for him? You got another hundred? Okay, cool. I'll take that. Then I'll get back to you in two years well, for another hundred. Don't don't forget you got what they call PV present value in the dollars. Yes. And you can invest them and start yeah. making some money. I'll off see the... you in two years. No big deal. Yeah. I'll take what you give me right now. Yeah. And then I'll see you in a year, or I'll see you in two years. Yeah, That's right. how you have to think about a lot of times. It becomes an agent thing. A Remember this. Agents are agenting for the next client. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to say, look at the record-breaking deal I got. Instead of just saying, what's the present value? What's the upfront cost? Is he getting all his money in 24 hours? Mm -hmm. they, they don't think like that. That's how agents, they just want to headlines. Biggest contract ever. Mm -hmm. Although, just a Jefferson deal is pretty good because mm -hmm. 90 I want to say about 94%, 93% of his money is fully guaranteed. That's basically the whole contract. Yep. Okay. Ooh, man, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder... I don't know. ...if Jerry should <clears throat> let Steven start doing more.